I want to talk about how we can solve uh, for x when x is under a square root. Now, I just want to, first of all, talk about doing this graphically, but then move into how we can do it to, uh, algebraically. So first of all, just notice we've got the square root of x plus 4, so the square root function, you know what that looks like, and then it's been shifted uh, left 4, so here it is. So if I said, okay, when is this thing equal to 5? Uh, excuse me, let's say 3. So you can see 3 is right here. And you could just say, well, you know, we want to know what x gives a y value of 3. It's 5. x is going to be 5. And, you know, easy enough to do with a um, graph to just say, well, I'm looking for what x brings me to 3. All right. Here's how we do that with algebra. We want to get rid of the square root. And the way we can do that is by squaring both sides. So the square root squared is just equal to the expression underneath the square root. And 3 squared is equal to 9. Subtract 4 from both sides. And there is x equals 5. So easy enough to solve. There's one thing before we solve a bigger problem here. There's one thing I just want to caution you on. If I had said to you instead, let me kind of do a little color change here. Let's say instead that I had said y was going to be negative 3. So I wanted to know when that function was equal to negative 3. Well, here you come down. There's no x where y would be negative 3 because this function doesn't ever go negative. I don't, I, there's no solution here. But. If I just solve this algebraically like this, I said, okay, when is square root of x plus 4 equal to negative 3? I square both sides. Well, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. And I've just lost it. I've just lost that negative sign by squaring. So I would have gotten 5 as my answer, even though graphically I can see that there is no solution. Be careful. We call that the extraneous solution, where squaring, the act of just squaring and, and losing that negative basically leads me to an incorrect answer. So sometimes you want to maybe think about the graph a little bit before you solve. Okay? Let's think about one without the graph. All right? So here we've got uh, 3 times the square root of 2x plus 1 minus 4 equals 2. Now, I would once again, uh, kind of like we did with the uh, uh, problems involving a square, a parabola, I would just kind of for a moment ignore this and work around it. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Now before I do any kind of squaring. I just always pause to think, if I took the square root of something, can I get an answer of 2? The answer is yes, I can. I can't get a negative 2, but I can get a positive 2. So I'm going to square both sides. So uh, taking the square root squared just leaves the expression underneath it. 2 squared. Subtract 1. both sides by 2, so you can get x by itself. x is 3 halves, or if you prefer, 1.5. Okay? Let's do one more. Okay? Again, we're going to kind of work around our square root, so we're just going to kind of leave this whole thing alone for a second. So I'm going to add 4. I'm going to divide by negative 2. And again, before I do any squaring, I stop and I say, if I take the square root of something, can I possibly get negative 7? The answer is no, you can't. 
the output of a square root needs to be positive. So this one has no solution, at least no real solution. Right. Let's do one more. Now, this one looks kind of tricky, and it looks certainly like we're not going to have a solution, but let's proceed through it. I don't make that judgment until the very end when I'm looking at the square root is equal to something. So let's kind of leave this by itself. First thing I'm going to do is subtract 4 from both sides. And divide both sides by negative 2. Can I take the square root and get 4 as an answer? Sure I can. Can't get negative 4, but I can get 4. So I square both sides. Subtract 5. X is 11. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe for more math help.